When you're developing a new electronic product, one of the biggest cost decisions that you'll make is the microcontroller. It's often one of the pricier parts on the board, and the choice you make affects performance, power, and long-term cost. The good news is there are now more low-cost microcontrollers available than ever before. Some are shockingly cheap, but the real question is whether they're actually worth it, because a few of these bargain chips come with some trade-offs that can cost you far more in the long run. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the top 10 cheapest microcontrollers that you can actually use in a real product. We'll count down from the most expensive to the cheapest, compare what you get for your money, and talk about which ones you should and shouldn't use. Hi, my name is John Teal. I'm a former microchip design engineer for Texas Instruments who developed and launched my own product, and now I help others do the same. All right, let's get started. Let's start with the fastest and most powerful chip or chips that we're gonna discuss in this video, and that's the Raspberry Pi RP2040 and the RP2350. The RP2040 runs a dual core Cortex-M0 Plus at up to 133 megahertz. It has 264 kilobytes of SRAM and external flash. Now, you do need separate flash chip for program storage, but it's a small price to pay for the kind of performance that you get for the price. This is the most capable microcontroller that I'm going to share today by far. Nothing else matches its clock speed or dual core design for the price. The newer RP2350 adds more performance and memory, yet it still stays under $1 in production quantities. For development, you've got the Raspberry Pi Pico board that uses the RP2040, and then you've got the Pico 2 board that uses the RP2350. Both are inexpensive, well-supported, and backed by a huge community. If your product needs serious processing power at a low cost, then the RP2040 or especially the RP2350 are both excellent choices. If you're struggling to figure out which microcontroller fits your product best, I built an interactive microcontroller selector tool that walks you through it step by step. You'll just answer a few quick questions about your product, things like wireless needs, power consumption, memory, cost, advanced features, then recommend the best option for you. I've expanded it to include all of the low-cost microcontrollers I'm covering in this video. You'll find the link below in the description or scan this QR code. Next is the Renesas RA0 family, one of the newest low-cost 32-bit lines from a major vendor. A good example is the RA0E1, which runs an ARM Cortex-M23 core at 32 megahertz, and it has 64 kilobytes of flash and 12 kilobytes of RAM. Pricing for this chip comes in around 60 to 70 cents in volumes of 1,000. Putting it toward the upper end of the one's options that we're going to discuss, but still well under a dollar. Now what makes the RA0 stand out is that it's built on ARM's newer M23 core, which supports trust zone security while keeping power and cost low. It's a nice balance of performance, efficiency, and long-term reliability, and Renesas has a strong reputation for industrial-grade microcontrollers. There's also a Renesas development board available, so you can start prototyping right away. So if you want a low-cost 32-bit microcontroller from a top-tier vendor with strong support, then the RA0 family is a great choice. This next one is a long-running favorite. It's the PIC 16 family, and it's used in millions of products worldwide. For example, a part like the PIC16 F15313 runs at 32 megahertz. It has three and a half kilobytes of flash and 256 bytes of RAM. Pricing for this chip typically lands around 60 to 70 cents in volume, depending on the features and the package. The PIC16 line is well documented, easy to find, and has an enormous ecosystem of boards and tutorials available. Performance is limited since these are 8-bit microcontrollers, but they're extremely dependable for small control tasks. If you want stability and long-term availability, and especially if it's already a family that you're familiar with, the PIC16 is still one of the safest bets out there. Next up is a name that's been around for decades, and that's the MSP430 from Texas Instruments. This family has earned a reputation as one of the most efficient low-power microcontrollers ever made. A typical part like the MSP430G2553 
runs at up to 16 megahertz, it has 16 kilobytes of flash, and 512 bytes of RAM. Pricing is about 45 to 50 cents in quantities of 1,000 units which still makes it one of the most affordable options available today. The MSP430's biggest advantage is power efficiency. It was built from the ground up for battery-powered products, and it's still one of the best performers if your product needs to run for months or years on a small battery. The downside is it's a 16-bit architecture, not 32-bit like some of the more modern options. TI does offer several launch pad boards for the MSP430, which makes it easy to experiment and test your design. If ultra low power is your top priority, then the MSP430 is still a great fit for products today. The STM32C0 family is one of the most impressive low cost options from a major vendor. A typical example is the STM32C011, which is a Cortex M0 Plus core running at 48 megahertz. It has 32 kilobytes of flash and six kilobytes of RAM. For only about 40 cents, you get access to ST's full development ecosystem and tool chain used across their higher end parts. This family is perfect for cost sensitive products that don't need wireless but still need reliable, professional grade performance. ST even makes a discovery kit for the STM 32C0 series to make prototyping easy. If you want low risk, long term support, and solid tools, then the STM 32C0 family is really hard to beat. Next up is TI's MSPM0 family, which is built for low cost, low power applications. One of the cheapest examples is the MSPM0 C1103 that runs at 24 megahertz, has 8 kilobytes of flash, and 1 kilobyte of RAM. At roughly a cost of only 25 cents, it offers great analog performance and typical TI reliability. It's great for sensor nodes, power monitors, or control circuits where accuracy matters more than speed. There's also a launch pad board for the MSPM0 to get you started quickly, and TI's software libraries are excellent. If you want an inexpensive 32-bit chip from a top-tier vendor with great analog performance, the MSPM0 family is a solid choice. The AT Tiny family from Microchip is a classic option for low cost control. A typical AT Tiny 202, for example, runs at 20 megahertz, has 2 kilobytes of flash, and 128 bytes of RAM. These chips usually cost around 25 to 30 cents in volume and are known for their simplicity and rock solid reliability. These chips have been around for decades, so there are countless development boards and example projects that you can find. If your product just needs to toggle a few GPIOs or handle basic control tasks, then AT Tiny microcontrollers are are still a great option. The N76 family from Nuviton is based on an old, old, old 8051 core and still shows up in plenty of low-cost consumer products. For example, a common part is the N76E003 that runs at 16 megahertz, has 18 kilobytes of flash, and a kilobyte of RAM. Pricing for this is around 20 to 25 cents in volume, and you can find these chips in LED controllers, small simple appliances, and interface boards. They're simple and stable, but based on a really old architecture, and they're not nearly as efficient as any of the 32-bit more modern designs. If you're already familiar with 8051 development, then these can make sense. If not, you're probably better off with something newer like the STM32C0 or the MSPM0. Okay, before we get to the final two, the ultra cheap ones, if you haven't tried my free microcontroller selector tool yet, then I suggest you go check it out. It'll help you choose the best microcontroller for your product in just a couple of minutes. Links in the description below, or you can scan this QR code here. Okay, now we're entering the extreme budget range with the CH32 family from a Chinese company that I'm not going to even try to pronounce, but thankfully they're also commonly just known as WCH. So the CH32V003, for example, is a 32-bit RISC-V core running at 48 megahertz with 16 kilobytes of flash, 2 kilobytes of RAM. These chips cost only around 10 cents in volume. It's just crazy. Documentation and support are limited, though, 
but a small open source community is working to improve that. You'll find a few basic dev boards available, but expect to do more figuring out on your own if you're going to go with this chip. And that's really the trade-off. You save money, but you take on more risk around supply and tooling. But if you want to push costs as low as possible, the CH32 family is one of the most interesting ultra-cheap options available. Finally, the cheapest usable microcontroller is the Puya PY32 family. One of the lowest cost models is the PY32F002B, and it has a Cortex-M0 core running at 24 megahertz with 24 kilobytes of flash and 3 kilobytes of RAM. Prices can drop as low as 8 cents for this chip in large volumes. The PY32 uses real flash memory, so it's fully reprogrammable and practical for production. The PY32 uses real flash memory, so it's fully reprogrammable and practical for production. Unlike some even lower cost options that you might see that only include OTP memory or one-time programmable, so I'm not covering those in this video. Now, the PY32 has some community-made dev boards, but they're basic and really lightly documented. And since Puya is another Chinese company rather than a tier one vendor, you're taking on some risk around long-term support and availability. But it's amazing that a fully capable 32-bit microcontroller now costs only about eight cents. If you need help selecting the best microcontroller for your product, we can help you inside the Hardware Academy. You'll get direct access to me and a team of engineers who can review your design, answer questions, and help you make the right technical choices for your specific product. If you enjoyed this video, check out these two next. This one here compares the ESP32, STM32, NRF52, and RP2040. And this one covers the top five most powerful microcontrollers available in 2026.